Hello everyone and welcome back to Not So Scale. In this video, we're finally going to finish the Tamiya TTO2R Subaru Impreza. In the last video, I built the TTO2R chassis. Now, it's time to install the electronics and do the Subaru Impreza body. Let's get right into it. Electronics Since this will mostly be used for on-road bashing, I chose some budget electronics. However, these still have good quality and quite impressive performance for their price. I wanted a censored brushless system since brushless motors are more efficient and more powerful compared to brushed motors. And a censored system is smoother than a censorless system, so you get better low speed control. This is why for the motor, I went with the Surface Hobby Rocket Supersonic 13.5 censored brushless motor. For the brain of the car, the Electronic Speed Controller or ESC, I chose the Hobbywing Quick Run 10BL120. I wanted an ESC that came from a reputable brand because the ESC is one of the most important parts of the car. With cheap no brand ESCs, you run the risk of damaging other components of the car or even starting a fire, which is why you shouldn't cheap out too much on the ESC. The Quick Run 10BL120 comes at a great value and has some nice features and programmable options, which can be set without a program card. Although, getting a program card will make setting the different options much easier. It also has a 6 volt PEC, which makes this compatible with high voltage servos. Speaking of servos, I will be installing a JX PDI 4409MG low profile servo. Again, keeping with the theme of being cheap, but performing well. This thing can run on 6 volts and has a decent speed while providing enough torque. For the transmitter and receiver, I will use the Dumbo RC X6 FG transmitter and receiver system. Now it's time to install our electronics. I just have to screw on the motor to the motor mount. Since I will use a little 27 tooth pinion with a 68 tooth spur, the motor needs to be screwed on to position K. So that means the hole with a 27 marking. Make sure that the marking is facing towards you when you screw the motor to the mount. Then I loosely attach the pinion to the motor before dropping the mount onto the chassis. Later on we still need to mesh the pinion with the spur so don't tighten the grub screw completely yet. Two screws are needed to attach the motor to the chassis. And there, now the motor is seated. Make sure that the pinion is aligned with the spur before you tighten the grub screw. Okay, time for some soldering. I have to connect the ESC to the motor and solder on XT60 connectors to the ESC and battery. My battery came with a DINS connector, so I will be switching that to an XT60. Okay, back to installing our parts to the chassis. For the servo, you have to build a servo saver and different parts are used depending on your servo. So just check the manual for the appropriate parts to be used. Before installing the servo horn and servo saver, make sure that your servo is centered and to do that just power on the servo and it should be centered. Then I attached it to the chassis with two screws. Here you can see that I twisted the servo wires on a screwdriver. This makes the wiring cleaner. Then I attached the ESC through the chassis with some double sided tape. After wiring the electronics and calibrating the ESC and transmitter, I was able to get the RC running properly.
Now let's move on to the body. The body still had some excess plastic which had to be cut. To do that, I used Lexan scissors and a hobby knife. After cutting out the body, I used sandpaper to make the edges and curves smoother. Holes for the rear wing, side mirrors, and body posts are also needed. For that, I used a body reamer and a hobby knife, because the body reamer I got was not really sharp. The hobby knife worked, however, it took more time to complete the job. Before painting the body, I washed it with soap and water. Then I applied the masks. I also used a pen to draw the outline off the windows to make positioning the masks easier. The body has a plastic film to protect the outside from paint over spray, so you can draw on the outside with a marker or pen and later on remove the protective film. Run your fingernail over the edges of the masks to make sure it sticks well and to prevent paint from bleeding. Now that the masks are on, it's finally time to paint. I used two colors for this body, Tamiya PS16 blue and PS12 silver as a backing color. I started spraying the body with a very thin coat of paint first so that the paint sticks better to the plastic. I did 3 to 4 coats of the metallic blue making sure to pause in between the coats to let them dry. To get a real good finish, you have to be patient and apply multiple thin coats of paint. Don't rush the painting process. I ended up using the whole can of metallic blue paint, but there were still some areas of the body which were not completely covered with paint, and still let some light through. It's a good thing I have the silver paint to back the blue. If you want the blue to be darker, you can back it with black. But if you want the blue to be more vibrant, you can use white or silver paint to back it. When spraying the backing color, you can spray thicker coats. However, I still tried to spray thin coats just to create a more even finish. After painting the body, we can now peel off the protective film. This thing looks so cool already, but we still have to put on the decals and attach the hard plastic parts. Oh look, the decals are already pre-cut. Nice. Applying the decals was probably the most difficult part of the build. There were a lot of decals that had to be put on this body, and it took so long to stick all of them. I had to line them carefully while also avoiding air bubbles. I used a technique wherein you will spray some water with a small amount of soap to help slide the decals around and give you some time to position them properly before they stick completely to the body. Some decals were also very small so I used the tip of the hobby knife to stick them properly. Applying the decals is a really tedious process but once I got into the flow the process felt kind of relaxing. With each decal placed I see the body slowly being completed and this gave me a good sense of accomplishment. There's the anticipation of seeing the completed body just pushing me to keep going and apply another decal. However, when building these RCs, you shouldn't view it as a task or something that needs to be rushed. Take your time and enjoy the process. The RC hobby is a really great hobby. You can use this to relax and take a break from all the things going on in the world. If you just want to rush things, the process starts to feel more like work and less of a hobby. This takes the fun out of it. 
This is why it is important to take a break when you already feel tired. You can always continue the build on a different day and you'll have more energy and feel more motivated to do the build. You may be wondering why it took me 4 months to upload part 2 of the TTO2R build. And no, it did not take me 4 months to complete the build. I actually finished the whole build way back in July last year. I just had a lot of footage and it was not really organized so it took a long time to edit. Plus I had to do school stuff so I didn't have a lot of free time. It also doesn't help that I am a procrastinator. Now it's already the term break so I finally had time to edit the video. I want to grow this channel more so I will keep uploading videos. I may not upload weekly but don't worry because I will keep this channel running and I will continue to make videos. I also want to say thank you to all of you who watch my videos and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support and I hope that you enjoy this video and all my other videos. There we have it guys, the build is complete. In the future, I will add a light kit to this and maybe even set it up for rally. I'm really pleased with how this thing turned out, it's not perfect. But for my first RC kit and first time painting a Lex Angel, I think I did quite a good job. I'll upload a proper running video of this on the channel so stay tuned for that and subscribe so you don't miss my future uploads. Completing this build video was a lot of work so if you enjoyed the video hit that like button to help support the channel. Again, thank you to all of you and I hope you have a wonderful year.